Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a brand new series that we are bringing. Um, this is a garden that I think has been in the works for about as long as Botanic, right? Right guys? No, no not that long, no, I think. No. Um, around two years. Just a year. Okay. Not, not, uh, not two no, years, uh, one year. One year. One year? Oh, okay. One, one year. year. So this is Blumenau uh, Gardens. This is a botanical garden that's been started by a bunch of people. Um, I have two of them here. Uh, one is Roman and Hello. the other is Drac. You have probably Hi. seen them on Bro Nation. Yeah. So how and why did you start this? Why did I start <laughs> a garden? Um, yeah, at first um, I started one area of the garden um, right in the center, the perennial garden. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was something I really liked. I saw, saw something similar in one of my travels to Berlin. And mm -hmm. I was like, um, yeah, I want to do this in Planet Zoo because it's so freaking cool. And from there yeah, then, um, on out, um, I started inviting people like Brock um, at first and later Carlos or um, Ricey. Mm -hmm. I even tried even, but he didn't want to. <laughs> 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 yeah. And um, yeah, my idea at first was have it um, to be like a community garden where everyone can make an area uh, taking part in it and somehow someone so, is trying to connect everything. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. I took over and did the whole cultural garden thing. Um, Carlos started with the Japanese garden, I did the Italian area, your perennial garden is now German area, I did a French area mm -hmm. and... Vigoga is making a Spanish Moorish garden over there. Yeah, right? I, I that's love that here, idea. Right? Yeah. So yeah. So like, as um, you can see, it's it's a big it's a big garden. Um, now you said the French garden. Where is that? You know where my the restaurant French? is. The restaurant. Oh, this down here. Yeah. Yeah, the little island you're seeing should be the French garden with the Ferris wheel uh, on the other side. It's based on Paris um, Vincennes. Park near the zoo in Paris. Okay. And Souf moved the Ferris wheel. It was perfectly lined up. And you can see <laughs> with a little temple on the island. I really loved the view. It looked like an uh -huh. impressionist painting when I saw it. So I came into the. I mean, I've seen this project for a while, um, but I've only recently really started getting into it um, about right now. Just because. Well, I had Koali at the time. We've, we've kind of put a hiatus on that project, but um, it's just a really cool project that uh, has not really been on YouTube. It's been on Bronation for a little bit, but um, there's there's a lot here. Like there's a lot of, of work in progress. I mean, if I floated around my own garden project, you would definitely see that sort of work in progress as well. And I don't want this to just be a one and done tour. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to kind of talk about how you collaborate and how you put things together and how like it, how you use design to kind of fix some some areas that may have just been sort of like um almost like sketches and not quite really thought out on how they connect with the rest of the garden so this is the area that we're going to be working on today um this is i believe drax garden right yes it's part of the yes. italian area and okay Basically, I still don't know how to play the game, and I have, have it since later. <laughs> and I still don't know how to use blueprints to make a beautiful place or use the, the damn path system. I still don't know. So <laughs> I just build stuff and put it together and hope it's, it's not too annoying. Uh, I'm more okay. known as a prop maker, as you can see, like the little busts and sculptures. That's what I like to do. But yeah, these are putting incredible. Into, thank you. But putting it into something that makes sense, it's not what I can, what I'm good at, I have to admit. Okay. So this is basically a Roman garden, like it's yeah, here. basically Renaissance um, style with uh, heavy mm -hmm. antique influences. Um, but yeah, that's basically the idea. And So the areas yeah. that... I kind of wanted to focus on where if I kind of bring it up to a plan view here um, this garden and Vihoja's garden here so this is um, something else that somebody else is working on they kind of 
they they kind of fit with each other, but they kind of fight each other. Like there is. There's a lot that is going on. Um, you have this beautiful fountain that we'll get to in another episode for sure. Um, that just goes all the way down to these really incredible pools. Um, and you kind of want the space to, to live on its own. You want these gardens to be able to uh, kind of hide out the other gardens or, or kind of disguise them. And this one is just way too tight. Um, it's it's also, this is, this is bugging my OCD too. It's like, why is this temple... <laughs> Uh, askew why yeah 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 so <laughs> my first sort of plan of action is to actually tighten this and to um kind of rotate the whole thing uh rotate it about this direction uh that it is so that it overlooks more of the garden and especially more of sort of this area um at the end it still is pretty like secluded but it's getting better like we, we have the ability to now start to kind of focus on sight lines so you can see more of the sort of uh, landmarks of the garden when you're up here i really want this to be almost like a terrace that just completely drops off so that you have a beautiful view of the the lower gardens there so that was that was kind of the first plan of action um, second plan was I really like the way that you have scrolled these uh, flowers and stuff like that. Um, I like the design. I like the I like the structure of it. I like the formality of it. But just to kind of focus um, and and put more of that rigidity in there in the garden, and then also age it too. So this one has taken oh I'd say about three weeks or so to to really get into position um to use (laughs) what's that i said poor you that you have to (laughs) i think it's fun (laughs) yeah it's fun it's fun um but yeah to tie these these spaces together so that is what we're working on today and i'm going to jump into the finished file um so that you can kind of see how all this came together And here is the updated file. Um, now you see that I didn't just delete everything. We we're actually at the base of the formal garden, but I wanted to kind of show off this idea that I had in mind with, with this garden in particular. It's called the contraction and expansion uh, design principle. You create a sense of drama by the way that the person experiences the garden. So if you start to close in your foliage and make it a little tighter and make you know even the path a little bit tighter, Um, and the space that you're in just a little bit more cozy, when you get to the point where you want to create the impact, you you strip all that away, and then you just see what uh, what you'll see at the top here. So this is the backside of that formal garden. I really wanted to make it kind of an interstitial space between Vihoha's garden and um, the formal, uh, I guess I call it the statuary garden now, but I guess it was the Roman garden uh, initially. So here we go. We're just going to take this nice and easy. Going to walk up. Very, very naturalized space. Lots of old growth trees, that sort of thing. And then as you reach the top, you can start to see this tree strip back. And from this side, you have it way opened up. And then from this side, you also have the, the sight lines way opened up. So there you go. There's your expansion. Uh, inside the Spanish garden. But you didn't put another tree there. You wanted that sideline, right? Yeah, I think sightlines are really effective in these sorts of large spaces because they can kind of mm-hmm. stabilize you as a guest to be able to see where you are in the garden. If you have too many things that look the same, you'll almost get a labyrinth effect and you'll start to lose people. So you would say it's a weenie? It's a weenie, yes, exactly. As, as Sylv would say, it's a weenie. So here we go into the new sort of formal garden space. And the first thing I did was 
make sure everything kind of lines up on a spine. Um, so this garden is very, very, uh, very strict. You yeah. can kind of see that all the spaces. It's enough better. And that was important for, you know, not just the, the formality of it to make sure that you can see the, the flowers really well um, and you can see across. Um, it makes it really easy to navigate when everything is very tightly kind of put together. And then your uh, beautiful wall structures are on either side too. So I kind of wanted to make that a, a, a feature that was a little bit more um, repeated. Thank you, but I never finished, yeah. finished it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's a lot in here that was work in progress. So just it's finished-ish. <laughs> I don't know what the intent exactly was, but it's finished-ish. Also, I saw these beautiful like old growth. I think they just put a whole bunch of acacias together, but I think it's I think that's a fantastic looking tree. Uh, really shows the age of the garden too. So I have those on all four corners. As you walk up here, I also wanted this to be a little bit more approachable. So I brought it back down to a human scale. Um, and then what's really cool is you have these, these little uh, little moments in here. Oh, that's really nice, even with a little pond behind it. Mm-hmm. That's really Just reminds a little me bit of Italian gardens. Whoops! Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hold on. It's a nice little juxtaposition between the strict formality of this garden and then sort of what happens as you let nature just kind of do its thing. It's a feature but, you always find in Italian gardens. Did you know that? Like these small features where you see a pond overgrown by nature. It's typical oh. for Renaissance gardens. I so, did not actually know that, but yeah, that's kudos, kind of like that. the... Oh, thank you. And then I wanted to, this is another sort of aspect of design. Uh, you notice how the trees just barely sort of frame out that column and that kind of draws you to the back. It draws you to the, uh, the Parthenon here, the temple. And so wherever you are in this garden, there should be something that draws you to the other side. So in this case, it's, you know, out to the fountain and then to the other side there. Um, and as you kind of walk past, the, the thing about these, that they're very colorful, they're very beautiful, but there's not a whole lot to see. There's only like a very tight palette of annuals and some evergreens and stuff like that. But it's the structure of the garden itself that should make you feel um, kind of like you want to explore it. Like you kind of want to see every every aspect of it. And then as the garden fades out, so you've got the color on the inside, but the outside is generally just green. Uh, it's just shades of green or in this case, a little bit of white. Um, and that's to, to bring focus to the inside. By a lot, so I'm just like um, seeing everything and looking and um, can't really put in words, but I'm seeing because there's so much to see. Mm -hmm. Like the little planters on top of the um, columns and where the ivy is growing down. Mm -hmm. I still and, don't um, get uh, yeah. how good you are with gardening, man. Uh, <laughs> if I try to garden, it, it's just a green mesh and you just make it work and I still don't understand how you do it. I see that you're using different lines of colors and a palette, but mm -hmm. I can't do it on, a, on the same level as you do. Sometimes you're just looking for shape. So like in this instance, it's your evergreens, uh, your evergreens mm -hmm. add shape and then this manzanita bush adds some shape. Then you've got line with like the ficus here and then the sort of, uh, I, this is a different sort of color green. And on the front, you just kind of repeat that line. That is, for me, that's kind of how I, I build out these these pieces. And then you use some trees in the background to, to kind of soften uh, that look a bit. But you really don't have to have a whole lot. You can just have a series of greens um, that creates a really nice palette. So it's always meant to be kind of viewed from the the poles here so that you really have a framed out view um, and it just kind of draws you past the fountain into um, what I'll show you next which is this this sort of overlook that will uh, kind of be a nice uh, negative space for the rest of the garden so you can really see where you are um, and kind of offer you some vantage points as the rest of the garden gets developed. From this side, um, remember I said there's always got to be something that kind of pulls you in the direction. This is pretty simple, but it does the job on these little topiaries. Um, on that side, it also kind of draws you that direction as well. 
And then from this side, you've got um, that whole forested walkway that we passed. It just ends up being sort of the background of this really, really pretty space. Uh, very open, very uh, to the sun so that all these annuals can just thrive. Um, and those colors really nicely pop. And then as you get to the shaded areas, again, your, ca your palette gets pulled back to these sort of whites and natural greens and stuff like that. On this side, I didn't have the room to make the, the big natural scape, so I did a little bit of like a, a green wall. Uh, maybe you could put another fountain inside. I could do another fountain. You do have a lot of fountains. This one you thing, this, this park would, this, this garden would uh, have a lot of, it would have to have like a, a full-time plumber uh, on, on yes. duty just to make sure Not all the only one. fountains work. And we get to this part. Um, this is what I really, really wanted. Initially, when the garden was installed, it just kind of dead ends. So you have this sort of um, this stylized flower bed, and then it just it had like a tree hedge in front of it, just to kind of close it off. I really wanted to open that view because this garden does use a lot of vertical space. So you've got these sort of turrets uh, or turrets, <laughs> not turrets. That's a different thing. Um, <laughs> on either side with a central sort of uh, viewing area. And on this side, I really want it to feel kind of grown in. Uh, you can see the that beautiful forum right there. Or what is that? Rotunda? What is that building? Let's call it a temple. Okay. It's a lovely temple. Um, <laughs> but on this side, I really wanted the old growth to kind of show in. So you get like little frames of other parts of the garden, oh, but you're a kind of... View. Yeah, you're up in the, in the tree level, which I think is always really cool. It kind of brings you back down to scale a bit. And then this viewing level all the way across kind of shows the, the olive hain and um, some of the other gardens. This is probably the next area that's going to get uh, reformatted, but at least the, the vantage points and the viewing areas are there now. And places like this, they're showing like um, how big these um, differences in height are in this, um, in this park, in this project. Mm -hmm. So um, at first, while building and uh, terraforming everything, I was um, like, yeah, adding like a big mountain in here and um, have it this high so that the um, fountain too much. Mm -hmm. That was like the only thought I had with it. So um, it's good to see that you're making it usable to um, even take something out of it where people can um, benefit from it. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're going to make people walk up these staircases and up these slopes, you better give them a reason yeah. to do so. And vistas are kind of the reason why humans would do that, because there are a lot of there are a lot of stairs in this in this garden. Um, there's a mm. lot of terrain heights. There is here's, I think this is uh, just a placeholder castle in the back or chateau, um, but eventually that will be sort of like the the crown point of this garden. But it was yeah, yeah, just based on Villa d'Este in Tivoli, in Italy, the um, ah. placeholder castle. And uh -huh. I can tell you, it's steeper in real life. It's it's much, much steeper in real life. And oh you walk gosh. around and there are fountains everywhere and it's twice the height. Uh, Holy Juan cow. Juan never went there, so he just took Google images and put it together real good. So mm -hmm. if you go to Google and search for pictures of Villa d'Este, it really looks like it, but in real life, it's way, way steeper and has more fountains. Oh my gosh. And it has more fountains. I was going to say, yeah. like, there's a lot of freaking fountains in here. I, I, and these would be natural fountains too, right? They're not like electrically pumped. Are they all natural? Um, no, they, they were built. They were built in the 1500s, I, oh I, if I remember co correctly. And there's yeah. one alley, um, Roman built, which is called the uh, Valley of the 100 Fountains. In reality, uh -huh. it's 200 fountains, but they call it the 100 Fountain Valley. I think I know so, where it is yeah. this thing right here. Yes. Yeah. This is insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, I, I mean, I can believe it, but holy crap, that's insane. And that's 100 fountains right there. I haven't two hundred in real life. Uh, I don't know if Roman counted them. No, <laughs> just put it inside. Know. I thought yeah. about doing like a new grotesque for every one of them, but I think the sea lions Roman used are all right. We can 
It's yeah. fine. Oh, you were going to custom face all those? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, and yeah, that kind of finishes off this this sort of uh, garden. You can see this is the, the piece next that I really wanted to create some separation from. Uh, and I feel like it finally has. When you look at this garden from the top, um, it kind of has a nice sort of splayed out effect now. You've got this uh, pool set right here and fountain set. And then you've got the formal gardens that kind of shoot out towards this direction. And then you have, um, this is another sort of alley to, to kind of go through. So the, the structure of it feels a lot more um, like it was intended. And it sits on the hill like it kind of dominates the area, like it would be a, a destination. Yeah. So. And it's so much bigger than it looks at first. So um, back then, um, when you showed the overview, it was like, was it always this big? No, it wasn't. It <laughs> yeah. wasn't. This it wasn't. one definitely got bigger. Um, okay, it, yeah, it, okay. is, <laughs> it is not substantially bigger, but it is bigger. Um, and this, this giant uh, sort of like uh, overlook added a lot to it but yeah. it just made sense because this was the most sort of intricate garden design um that i think you would want to see it from from other angles as well as opposed to just walking by it from one angle and then lastly this was a pain in the ass uh, i will admit um but there are two ways to get up so there's the way that we went which is this lovely sort of forested way and then there is this way which connects you down to the round temple and kind of hugs around the structure here gives you another sort of like view of of these uh this tree layer as well and yeah in real life this would definitely be quite quite a uh quite a ways up um but it just kind of gives you a lovely view as the rocks start to kind of caress you down and then you're in this level of the garden but the thing with these old places in germany um yeah i said it's Uh, really a lot of stairs but the thing is in germany all these old spaces like um castles or parks or mm -hmm. um, even all the mansions mm -hmm. they're really looking like this so it's like you're walking up and i think um the thing most people do in germany even the um, older people is like walking mm -hmm. as a sport um in german we are called wandern i don't know hiking hiking yeah oh yeah yeah, um, yeah. And um, yeah, we truly love to walk up a lot of things. <laughs> It's one But these uh, <laughs> fences wouldn't be allowed, you know, you could just kill yourself with these fences there. Really? That is true. <laughs> That is true. I did not want to create a custom fence, so there they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, you have that same sort of contraction and expansion as you reach the top. So it really kind of heightens this sort of this uh, terrain that you've you've conquered and then nice. there you are back up everything opens up and yep. you have this sort of like this epiphany you know what I'm missing benches What's that? You know, benches if I want to sit down after the way yeah, up. up okay yeah that's, there's that's there's some I'm benches here <laughs> I don't know if man I don't want to walk <laughs> this <laughs> I don't know if uh, Germany is like America where you just have benches in all the places or if they're a little bit more considered. Um, uh, it depends. It depends. But yeah. we are one of the oldest countries in the world. So we have many, many old people that can't walk <laughs> far without sitting down. So we have benches everywhere, basically. But yeah, there are there are a lack of benches here. You kind of have to hoof it a bit. <laughs> so what do you think was the biggest challenge in making this garden work for you um i had to, I had to shift everything like really probably this <laughs> this terrace was the most difficult piece um just because it's a brand new structure that i added um and i had to completely like redo the the face of the mountain and stuff like that i think there was a another waterfall creek here i had to get rid of that oh yeah, yeah. um just because you, you're right next to another water feature so so many water features <laughs> To me, water is special in a garden, and you don't want to overdo it uh, too much. You want to you want to have a little space in between these sort of big features, um, but that may not be the case with with European gardens. I don't know. I come from an American perspective, so yeah. Like I said, the not this garden because that's just something I built randomly. 
the garden next to it, the Tivoli um, Villa d'Este garden, it's full of fountains, water features. And so this is something you will always find in, in Plumenau Botanical Garden here. We have so many water features. <laughs> I'm fond of them. If you think they are too much, go for it. If you want to just purge every water feature, you make it work. <laughs> I'm sure you I wouldn't do. purge every water feature for sure, but there is there's a lot of water and you know knowing how water features work, they're a lot of maintenance as well. And so I mean this one is incredible, but holy cow. <laughs> yeah, that's not finished. <laughs> and I, I've never planned on finishing it, so you can just right, well, there you go. that one out of <laughs> That would be one that I would probably not try to put back in. But it is cool. Yeah. It's a very, very no. cool concept. It's it, it sucks, honestly. I don't <laughs> like it. I really don't like it. I wanted to, to uh, I wanted Re a remnant to walk on this area, but he never did. And he built yeah. his own botanical garden with Chesh <laughs> and Haribo and Christina. So I'm a bit, little bit mad about that. But I never <laughs> wanted to build in this area. I wanted remnant to put something inside, and I just did this. Gotcha. And I'm not proud of it. I'm really not proud of it. The main problem it. It just clashes with the Alpine uh, area by Roman next to it. It just clashes. It doesn't work. Oh, yeah. By the way, this so... is moving as well. This is beautiful, but this is moving. <laughs> yeah. Alpine, Alpine Garden this, is yeah. very cool, but it would never be like near a, a lakeside. Um, they are generally up where they are away from water um, so that they are not uh, too too high in humidity. Let's just say that. Alpines don't really like humidity. They like things to to kind of shear off. They, they don't want to keep water around them. So this I see actually over somewhere up here. Oh, that would fit so much better there. Yeah. So you have this this really pretty um, fountain design from Vihoja. Um, so you're kind of rewarded by coming all the way up to the, the crest by having this really cool alpine garden up here. So see, I got, yeah. I got plans for days, but this was the first one because it was so central. Um, and it just had to get fixed first. Look how big it is. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, it's half the size of the whole map. Perhaps I made it a little too large, but it's fine. No. For the scale of the garden, no, it's, it's fine. Great. <laughs> well, this has been episode one. Um, we hope to do some more episodes as well. Every time we are just taking pieces of the garden, uh, moving them around a little bit and trying to make it function a little bit better. Um, but as far as I know, is me and Roman that is working on it right now. I think Zuv is working on his part over there in the entrance, which I cannot show. Mm -hmm. He told me to not show it, so I won't. Um, I don't know if anybody else is working on the project, honestly. Drac, you're out for the count right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. Uh, Carlos is still working. He's working on a Brazilian area. Oh, that's right. He's got a really pretty space over there that, uh, again, I won't show yeah. yet. Um, but it is very, very cool and a very different garden than anything. Uh, that we've seen so far. Yeah, what are you working on, Roman? What I'm um, so the area you described um, before, like with the cascades. Mm -hmm. I had a file, um, a backup file where I tried something out. It's like um, something open with a little bandstand in it, in it, and like um, connecting the water side to the um, to the staircase. Mm -hmm. Nothing too big, and what I wanted to do too is like finishing the Chinese garden. Yeah, that's this finishing. guy over here. Yeah, yeah, this is a really cool garden. I won't go too far into it because I don't want to don't want to give away too much of its secrets. But it is one of the really really well put together gardens I've seen. Thank you very much. Yeah, basically, basically, Roman took everything out of my stuff and. <laughs> build it from the ground up again, the Chinese one. So <laughs> I mean, that's going to be a common theme, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's happening, happening everywhere because I yeah. never finish anything. I never do. I just build and someone just cleans up my stuff and it works right. out for the yeah. better. All right. Any last thoughts, guys? Uh, it was amazing. Thank you for doing that. It looks great. It was amaz an amazing first time being on YouTube, so uh, <laughs> it really was. Um, yeah, I'm excited for the next time. Well, we'll, we'll kind of kick it there. Uh, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and give this uh, video a like. Um, subscribe if you want. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, and we hope to see you in the next one. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.